Hey everybody, welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I am Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And I'm Andy Robinson from the Underdog Night Soldiers. All right. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Now, you, as far as I can recall, you've never been on the main show. I don't think so. I think I, I've been doing the weekend shows for yeah. about 10 years, and I finally, <laughs> I finally cut my teeth, and I've been welcomed onto the regular weekly show. So thanks for having me today, guys. Yeah. You're a made guy. Exactly. I'm a made, yeah. Yeah, I made my bones while you all were still back on Alderaan dating <laughs> cheerleaders. <laughs> Space cheerleader. So inevitably, Did- for those of you that don't know me, I co-host the Godfather Minute with Alex, my brother Alex. And so inevitably, it's going to be impossible for me not to bring in Godfather references. So right. hang on. Well, that's, that's why you're here. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you think that there were uh, high schools on Alderaan? There had to be, right? So do, did they have cheerleaders? <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. I assume they had some kind of higher education, which would imply high school right. cheerleaders. I don't know. Hmm. Is it like yeah. there's like three le- like, all right, we we can assume they have schools. And can we assume that they had school sports? And can they we assume that they had people to cheer on those school sports? I think even assuming they had schools is might be a bit much. I mean, really? for all we know, it's like a feudalism society there where the, high, the elites are educated. But hmm. All the, the regular people are just uh, working class slobs who mm-hmm. don't get any formal education. Well, no. if you do have schools, then there are definitely going to be sports because that's been a vital part of schools, and at least in this country's history. But it gets me wondering what sports would they have? Right. And on Alderaan, that was a pretty mellow planet, right? Yeah, they were they had no weapons. Man. We don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, who could hold up the peace sign the longest? Oh, right? yeah. Right. Who could plant the most trees or something? Right. Oh, yeah. Who could yeah. hug the most trees? <laughs> well, but you know, speaking of high schools, I don't think I've ever seen a young person in the Star Wars universe with acne. Mm. Mm. Do you think they could have made it a little more um, relevant or, or real if they had a young Anakin? <laughs> Princess Leia, I love you. No, it wouldn't be Princess Leia. <laughs> I love you. He's got zits and acne right, cream. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. yeah, originally he was supposed to be 12, so that's closer. Mm. You know, they, they should yeah. have totally gone with the awkward, um, you know, in one of the movies, either in Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones, they totally should have had him be more kind of awkward teenager and less kind of oh. uh, <laughs> smoldering heartthrob. <laughs> Anakin could not be any more unlikable. Let's show him as yeah. a let's show him as a gangly, <laughs> well, sullen teenager. That would you know give me more sympathy. I'd be like, oh man, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know where I haven't been is the planet Crate, um, which is where this minute takes place. This is minute one hundred and twenty-six uh, wow. of Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. One two six starts with the uh, Finn. He's going in, going in full throttle, and uh, it ends with Finn asking Rose why. Why did she stop him? Why? Why? <laughs> and she and boy, she leaves us on a cliffhanger. She answers, yeah. "I, I," and then, and then it's just frozen. I think she gets I... killed right there. That's, she gets <laughs> shot by a by a bounty hunter. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. So the minute starts off with Finn riding his uh, ski speeder mm-hmm. into what seems like uh, his death. He's he's sacrificing himself. Yeah, not just for Ray, but for the whole resistance. So I feel I think it's I think it's safe to say that Finn has now completed his arc. He is now whole hog on board as a resistance guy. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. He even he's... closes his eyes as he's making the final approach, as if the Force itself is guiding him. Hmm. He closes his arc and he closes his eyes. Yeah. Mm. I originally thought that's why he got knocked off his course into the center of the siege cannons because he closed his eyes. Who closes their eyes when they're flying a plane? <laughs> yeah. Well, he was trying to do like a Luke Skywalker. He's like, maybe yeah. if I like turn off my, if I trust the force or something. And... <laughs> that would have been a great if. Wow, if, the force works. <laughs> that'd be great if he closes his eyes and then you hear Ben say, no, keep your eyes open. <laughs> what are you doing? Turn on your targeting computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> FN2187, open your eyes. <laughs> You're no Luke Skywalker. Um, well, going back to what you were saying, I think uh, uh, it was my understanding you're supposed to close your eyes when you open your ar- open the arc, right? Not when you close the 
Oh, the I think arc. when you close yeah. the arc, it's safe to open yeah. your eyes. <laughs> Wrong show. I know. <laughs> I was trying to. Th so, do you recall seeing this in the theater? If you thought they were going to actually kill off Finn, do you think were you like, "Wow, this is it"? He's they, has like the heavenly choir music going. All the cues are mm -hmm. telling us that this character is about to die, and then mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't. But do you remember thinking in the, in the when you saw it one way or the other? Either of you. I don't remember. <laughs> But they, you're right. They definitely set it up that this is his moment. I mm. feel like I knew, you know, my my exterior brain, my my extra textual brain interfered too much because I knew they went like they're not going to get rid of this guy now. But they killed Snoke off. That was the big... yeah Snoke off. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that that you know he wasn't the same level. They yeah. there wasn't they weren't promoting him as heavily as like here's the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, like yeah. Rose, Finn, Poe, Kylo Ren are all on like a different level of promotion with this, where it's just like, well, those are those are their yeah. characters. They're not gonna. Um, I I would not have been surprised if they had somehow like I I I almost recall having an inkling that Rose would would basically take over this, you know, because I knew she was in this. We see her kind of, you know coming in to to crash into him and i was i had kind of an idea of like oh is that like they wrap this up in that she sacrifices herself to to uh get back get revenge um on the 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 evil uh, first order that that destroyed her sister you know that that seemed more likely was like oh there's this person we just met who really hates the first order like and here's a suicide mission so you're saying Rose should have done the suicide mission? Uh, but why? Well, I, I mean, I guess it makes sense that nobody, nobody does. Right. I don't know. It, it's an interesting point. I mean, I think I think we we were talking about it a little bit last week. But Poe's little Leia voice of being like, you know, him, what he learned in the beginning of the movie, coming back, possibly to his detriment in this. I don't know. Like he, now he's kind of extra shy about it. It's like, well, I don't want to be that blow it up guy. When sometimes you do need to blow it up, but but I don't know. Yeah. Do mm. would that have would that have really helped them here? Is the question. Mm. Does you know does Star Wars inevitably come down to that decision tree? Blow it up or run? There you go. <laughs> I think it, you're either gonna be Wedge or you're gonna be Luke. One of those two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You either mm. blow it up or run. Yeah. Yeah. I get out of there. Or die. Kid. I like, guess. It's, it's, yeah. You blow it up, you run, or you die. That's, yeah. Those are your options. Yeah. Shoot. I guess. Well. Speaking of which, I don't know if this is possible to discuss without spoiling a bunch of movies, but I was uh -oh. wondering if, of other movies where I can think of one other movie where I was convinced that they were going to kill off characters and um and then they like in the moment I was like, boy, this really seems convincing like like you see the characters I don't I'm trying to think of other movies where you thought someone was going to die but then it turned out that it was a switcheroo and they survived but I don't know how to discuss it without like saying oh yeah this movie where everyone thought that character mm -hmm. was going to be like oh ET or so, you know but <laughs> but that, uh you that know that would be the ultimate spoiler segment of a podcast ever we we just talk about people <laughs> right. who were expected who die, to die and didn't <laughs> you thought that would be were. a great idea <laughs> a great podcast every episode we talk about different like spoilers like oh what, what are movies that have uh someone gets stabbed in it and you're like oh this movie has someone in this movie and then you know <laughs> or just take on like the the most famous spoilers from yeah you know uh all different again i, I don't want to say too much there's a there's a t-shirt out there that just mm -hmm. is like it, it's like a you know i think in each each kind of uh franchise's uh, respective font it lists like a main spoiler from that and it's like a whole t-shirt just full of spoilers from all across <laughs> pop culture you know it's like you know Darth Vader is his father and you know all this right. other stuff so um <laughs> it's a great idea I like the idea of this company ones that we can stick to that people know <laughs> yeah it's a sled yeah um, and what's what's great about that is is it's also the the piece of merchandise it, it holds a record for the piece of merchandise that uh, garnered the most number of lawsuits 
<laughs> yeah. It's one piece of merchandise that got 10 different lawsuits, each from different production companies. <laughs> or I was going to say, like, eat the most punches in the stomach. For yeah. People who wear yeah. That's what I thought you meant. People somebody. being, like, assaulted for, for having worn it. And then they, they sue yeah. the shirt company. Like, why'd you make me wear this? I like that this company is like some hardcore like First Amendment group that's like, we're going to do shirts. Even. We don't care how the angrier it gets people, the more likely we are to make it right. as a shirt just to uh, just so that they can like contest it. And, or, and have or us... How about the front of the shirt says, like, warning, do not read the back of this shirt. Mm. And then on the mm. back of the shirt, it has all the spoilers. On the front, it would just say spoiler alert, and on the back would just be. No, no, it wouldn't even say spoiler alert. It, said, oh. it would say, do not read oh. the back of this shirt. <laughs> And then don't even warn you why so you're enticing no, well, that, people to read the back. Just yeah. tells you what you know, like that's well, you got. I told you not to read it. You yeah, know, you get what you, you got in the warning because <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. nothing like getting punched in the back while you're walking <laughs> yeah. on the boardwalk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would be a list of all the spoilers, and in the bottom it would say like Ocean City, New Jersey. You know, like, <laughs> right. <almost. laughs> Or my parents went to Ocean City, and all I got was a list of spoilers. Yeah, my parents went to Ocean City, and all I got was Rosebud is a sled. Right, you know, right. just like, whatever the the line is. Um, hey, yeah, I you're a, right. I so have we... a technical question about this minute. Okay, and yeah. maybe this is common knowledge. Sixty so, seconds. So yes. th this is a siege cannon, right? Is a, um, a siege cannon, super laser siege cannon, super laser siege cannon. So I'm not sure how it works technically, but he's uh, Finn's flying right in the center of it. It's why very is he... weak. <laughs> yeah, why is he not yeah. blowing the, up? The super laser is the brand name. It's not really a super laser. Oh, um, <laughs> don't let it fool you. Yeah, is it like a targeting light before it it bursts out its its actual ray? It's it's, it's super ray. Yeah, it. it... They, there's a little bit of kind of like background dialogue when it first um, fired up that just says something about mm -hmm. like, oh, the gun is warming up now. Like it's okay. going to, you know, it takes, it takes a little bit of time for it to fully. Yeah. You got to preheat the, the super laser yeah. siege cannon. <laughs> I guess that light is almost like the little laser that it just shows you where it's going to be pointing. Yeah. Right. As opposed to actually doing any, any damage. So it's the uh, targeting laser. Right. Exactly. So, I, so it would have been less dramatic if they had not had any light or laser at all, and Finn just flying directly into the center of the super siege cannon. Right? Maybe. Mm, I don't know. With, that no. might, you know, I take it back. It might have been even more dramatic because you hear it gearing up. It's about ready to fire, and it's just this black void that he's going yeah. into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. And then just like with no fanfare, he like he just like <laughs> flies into it. It's like. Thunk. <laughs> That's it. There's no, there's no music. There's no anything. It's just like I can do it. I'm gonna do. Thump. Thump. And then it fires anyway. Yeah. And then... It fires him backward. You know, like he yeah. smashes into the door first, and his feet are sticking out the bottom, like going the other way. You're like whoa, 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 whoa. I like this version of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Mel Brooks version, right? Yeah. Um. We. Um. What? 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 So Finn is close. He goes to the point, as we mentioned, he closes his eyes. He's going to crash. And then something happens where he like snaps out of his reverie. And I can't figure out what it is. Like, what? Why does he s open his eyes? Basically, it almost sounds like something hits the ship. But then he looks over and Rose is still really far away. Did hmm. she shoot at him? Uh, yeah. I have two. Here's the, I'll I'll go with the hopeful answer, which is that remember he does have kind of mild force abilities, mm -hmm. and so the, the 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 old standby, the old saw of like what you can't can't explain it. Oh, it must be the force. Um, so I'll, I, I'll I think he had a little spidey sense because of the force. Yeah, as someone who frequently brings up things from the Rise of Skywalker that are uh. I, I can't I can't begrudge you you're using this as a defense because you're doing the exact same I think which is using something from the Rise of Skywalker to explain it. But uh I love the well, fact that you had to use the force. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna Pete say Pete is notoriously anti force on the show. So my um, my other answer was of course that the, the ski skeeter ski speeders have a uh, little like proximity alert kind of a mm. thing. You know, like my car has, you know, if I get oh, too close right. to the to the talk box at the drive through it'll be like beep 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 beep, beep. <laughs> so see, um, yeah. a similar kind of a thing i think it's like you know hey there's 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 a, another speeder headed right for you 
Okay, I, I like that. I, I think that's why Finn gets so upset too. He's he's not mad that he got he crashed and didn't get to destroy the siege cannon. It's just that she activated that really annoying proximity yeah. <laughs> sound. We all know how annoying that sounds. Like, ah, can we just turn that off? He's looking for the button in it when she crashes into him. <laughs> Uh, and then Rose smashes into him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they both well, live. We get a we get a weird little like zoom into the cockpit. Uh-huh. You know, like Rose is just kind of like focusing, and it's like a weird little whoosh, like uh, um, I'm trying to think of what what that evokes cinematically for me because it's a, it's an odd choice. Um, I like it, but it's it's not Star Warsy. It's like a it's like Jawsy. Um, not quite, but but like. I'm thinking of something. I think specifically with a cockpit, you know, because we've seen we've seen all kinds of pilots in cockpits before, but we never get that like zoom into them. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's been in other things, other other you know, like like Earth pilot movies. Top Gun. Never saw Top Gun. Hmm. Hmm. Rose never saw Top Gun. That's why. Hmm. Is there a Top Gun in the Star <laughs> Wars universe? Do you think? Uh, I'm assuming we'll get something akin to that with Rogue Squadron coming out in 2023. That would be an interesting um, thing is to see the fictional movies that are created about the Star Wars universe in the Star Wars universe. Right. Like, Like, if Luke goes to the airport and picks up a novel and it's about, like, rebels on Kashyyyk <laughs> and you know it's all just made up stories or even history even historical fiction so uh yeah like, I'd be curious yeah. to see what their version of like what's this, the saving private Ryan in the Star Wars universe right right or like a yeah. like a kind of a biopic about mm. um I'm trying to think of who were the like but you could, I don't know like would it be possible to do one about you know let's say Jar Jar or something like that like would the is is it is that within the we don't know what his how his history remembers him in the Star Wars universe, but we know right. that he, you know, was kind of duped into accidentally creating the Empire. So, like, would that be historically? Put would some they air, know? Let's put some air quotes around that accidentally. Well, for the you moment, know, he's a clumsy, so it's not surprising. <laughs> but like, would they would that be an interesting enough historical kind of footnote mm. to make a, a movie out of? Would he be saying he would be the Benedict Arnold of the Star Wars universe? No, I mean, I think they would have to do like a new one. Th- I'm assuming he would be more or less, not forgotten, but, you know, it would be kind of more obscure historical character. I'd be like, oh, did you know that, Ah, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the guy who, the guy who, uh, acts, you know, who initiated the vote to, to create the Empire actually was friends with Darth Vader before he became Darth Vader? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost, yeah, this seems like future trivia for a, like a, a eighth graders American history. Uh, uh, right. Amazing facts from a, from the galactic history kind of a, the, kind of a thing. Or the, the, the weekly cantina trivia night. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Which senator is infamous <laughs> for having uh, initiated the vote? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, but Rose's stunt. I feel like that's much more likely to get both of them killed than it is to save uh, Finn's life. It's amazing that neither of them got killed in that crash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, I was thinking the same thing. It just. I guess it was a good move because it maybe because it works out at the end, but yeah, it just seems like they're both going to die. Like if those were cars mm-hmm. going that fast, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Stone, I'm going to stop you," and we both crashed when our cars rolled over several dozen. T- like mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. And I don't think these models have airbags. No, no. definitely not. They barely even have a, uh, what are those things called? Cockpits. No, uh, like a windshield. Right. Oh, yeah. Cockpit. Cockpit containers. Why am I can't think of this word? <laughs> Windshield blast shield. Blast shield. <laughs> down. Can't even see. Um. Yeah. It's a. But yes. It, it is a risky, tricky maneuver. I'm, I'm assuming that maybe she was hitting kind of not dead on into his cockpit, but just enough to mm-hmm. kind of spiral around. But yeah, she does still get hurt pretty yeah. significantly. We we think. I don't know. We, we we don't know. She'll tell us unless she gets assassinated. Which... Maybe that's what she was about to say. I, I 
feel like my liver was punctured by a large piece of metal in that crash. I, I, I shouldn't have done that. I was trying to go around you. I didn't mean to hit you. No. Yeah. I don't know I, how to fly this. I'm a technician. I, I never got my pilot's license. <laughs> Well, you all know the movie better I than I do. I am so your I, father. <laughs> I really was wondering what she's going to say next, and I didn't yeah. look ahead. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's kind of like the Mad Lib thing, right? Oh, I, you're right. Why, why did you do this? Why did you stop me? <laughs> I had Burb. too much fun on the casino planet. <laughs> uh, I think the, the next word is caramba. So. <laughs> <laughs> or chihuahua. Right. <laughs> I space chihuahua. <laughs> space chihuahua. Um So then we cut to Poe, who does a cool slide on the on the salt flats and he lands in the trench. That's a cool move. I would like mm -hmm. to try that. I'd like to yeah. be in some situation where the, the 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 circumstances were just right. Like there was some ice that landed in a trench. That would be cool. It's even cooler because it's a salt flat, so the yeah. the the level of friction has changed. So he he yeah. even knows how much momentum to build up to drop in at just the right time. Mm. That's some <laughs> serious knowledge of chemistry and physics. Yeah, it'd be funny if he just like totally overshot it or undershot it. I guess like, <laughs> and then has to get up and crawl like the last feet. couple of. Yeah. <laughs> they have to pull him by the feet. <laughs> Or he overshot it and went over the chasm because yeah. it was so like frictionless. It's like whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, he he went to uh, he was trained in uh, he knows how to do the coolest thing in any uh, mm -hmm. elemental situation. You, right. you know, if it was phosphorus, he would have done a totally different. He would have yeah. done like handsprings, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. somersaults down the uh... <laughs> a manganese cartwheel. Here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I wrote uh, Poe's Duke slide because it is kind of oh, it's, it's that yeah. cool. It's kind of a um. Speaking of, of, of Reb Squadron, um, the uh, they also get uh the little entry tunnel there, which is interesting. Like they didn't go out from the big door into the trenches, or maybe they did, but they don't go back in. They're going from the trenches. They're going in through a little entry tunnel, which seems like a little yeah secret tunnel. Yeah. Seems like okay. There's another like they they made a whole big deal out of like hey, there's no you know there's only one door in or out, and then there's like well except for the doors that the speeders come out of and the little entry door that we're gonna go back into after we're done. But other than that, yeah, it's just the big door. <laughs> like there seems like there's little doors all over. Yeah. Well, three people like well, sir, technically those aren't doors. Those are right. those are exit ways. You asked for <laughs> doors. <laughs> oh. I would yeah, love that to be uh, a technicality that like like the the entire resistance perishes because C three PO is like oh yeah they're entry uh, uh, passageways but not doors. <laughs> well, the, I heard the working title for this was Star Wars: The Last Egress. Mm. The last. <laughs> and people um, were, were worried it was going to be about birds, so they. Mm. <laughs> they thought it was like an environmental film about birds. Right, yeah. The last, the last egress. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, my last note is I just like the shot of, you see the, all the all-terrain armored transports and the big gun and everything all lined up there on the, on the, yeah, ready, on the ridge, ready mm -hmm. to go. Yeah, yeah. It, reminded, the... it reminded me of one of those old medieval sieges where you've got all the warriors waiting to get into the castle and you've got the 20 guys with the battering ram all beaten on the door and yeah. everyone's kind of waiting behind it. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what they would have done if they had done instead of um if they had done like a Lord of the Rings style thing with like thousands and thousands of stormtroopers outside instead of just like a couple of big pieces of machinery, you know. If mm. that would have if they just said, you know, we're just gonna starve them out and, and mm. there's we know there's no other entrances or exits, so they they have to come out eventually. I mean the idea is that they're still waiting for Right, they put to out a they put out a signal. distress call. Right. Yeah. Right. With with Leah's personal code. Mm -hmm. Wink. There, there were some times in in real history where Genghis Khan would lay siege to castles in in Europe, mm -hmm. and famously he would wait, sometimes wait, and just starve them out. And psychologically, to to pressure them to giving up sooner, he would build walls around the outside of the castle. <laughs> so they were enclosed they were the ones who were in they weren't safe in this castle now they were enclosed in yeah. genghis khan's uh, yeah. circle of death 
<laughs> so wild. then they would have to go out and build another big circle <laughs> yeah. to cover that one. It's just a ring of concentric circles that That's gets right. it. That's what they call it ring theory. Oh, ring theory. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that he used to blast like Guns N' Roses and uh, Metallica <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that to try to get them out. Well, welcome to the jungle. <laughs> um, well, that, um, that was pretty much all I had for the actual minute. Although I did want to ask, um, because I know you are, I like getting updates on your experience with Star Wars through Alex. So I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you, uh, Andy, about the, uh, your memories of seeing this movie. Do you remember when you first saw it? You know, Alex, you may have to help me. Did I see it with you? Yes. Is this the one we saw in Portland? Yes. Oh, my gosh, you know, uh, the newer movies do, I love them all, but they do blend. I don't remember seeing this one as I was watching this minute. I remember seeing it, but I don't recall when I went into the theater. So I'm sorry, Pete. I, no, I wish I had a better story. Like the time we went in, and I and I hadn't seen no trailers. I definitely know I I know that I didn't see yeah. any trailers because I I don't watch I don't learn anything about I don't even get I don't even log on to the internet about eight months before a new Star Wars movie comes on mm -hmm. gets released right. because I don't want to know anything about it. So it was fact, all surprises now, to me. Yeah, now you're finally allowed to go back on the internet because there's not a Star Wars movie on the horizon for a long time. So is, you're finally getting back into the. Uh, is that true? That is true. Oh, What's the next first one? 2023, 20, 20, I think. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a drought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two years from now. That's two, crazy. How are we going to do it? That's a whole nother two years. <laughs> uh, we've um, got more than enough droids, though, so that's the yeah. good news. But, uh, but I know I enjoyed watching it. I enjoy yeah. watching all of them. They're just great. And I don't, I don't think too much about them. I think that might be the key to me really enjoying them. Right. I just you go just... with it. I go in not knowing it, and I, I live for the experience of seeing it with a crowd and just learning about it as I as it goes along. Right. Yeah. It's it's difficult for me because usually I'll see them by the time I usually the, the, the past few movies I've seen them the second time with my brother. Mm -hmm. Like like I I have, to go, I have to go see it you know the opening weekend or whatever for so I don't hear any spoilers and for the show, but um, so I've. And uh, the only thing I remember from The Last Jedi is I think we got there a little late. Mm. Mm. We, we just got there at the end of the opening crawl. Mm. Because, I remember, right. because I remember <laughs> you going like, what did, what did it say? And I go, it doesn't matter. Like, it's, <laughs> you, you don't need the opening crawl in The Last Jedi. It's all very apparent who the good and bad guys are, what they're right. doing. You know, you don't really need any backstory for that one or yeah. very little anyway. So, um that's the only Although thing I you, remember. You missed out in the opening crawl. It's actually, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the First Order is this, the Resistance is doing this, Rosebud is a sled. It says that in the... <laughs> so. Complaints, please see the manager. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as our first All-Star this week, uh, my brother, this is a question we've been asking our uh, guests, and uh, I'm really curious as to what you would say for this one. If, let's suppose... Um, uh, Walt Disney approached you and said, "We love Godfather Minute. We want you guys to have cameos in the in the next. You guys want a cameo in the next Star Wars movie? You can you can have a cameo in the next Star Wars movie. Not a speaking line, but just you know a background character. Mm. What type of background character would you like to be? Like a droid or a alien? Or a... Well, so what are my options? Humanoid, droid, or human droid?" Alien, well, you right. could be like a rebel officer. You could be an imperial officer. Mm. You could Pretty be much unaffiliated. Anything human. you've seen in Star Wars that that doesn't have, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't have a speaking part because that would involve yeah. a whole different union and all that. But you can do yeah. um, any other thing that you've been that you've seen that you've seen. Well, could I get a speaking part that is not in English? Is that a, is that a low a level lower than in, do do the non English speaking characters? Have the same level of uh, union membership and pay that English the English speaking ones do. Like if I'm mm. a droid and I go, <laughs> oh. I thought you meant like like if you were in like a like a droid who spoke Spanish, would you be able to get? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I Chihuahua. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, it would be cool to be like a sand person in in some type of costume or something. It would just be right. really cool, but in reality, probably not, because he'd be waiting around on set in Tunisia and be dehydrated by the end of it. He'd be all sweaty mm -hmm. and be like, Did it, is it time for my scene yet? Yeah. 
I'd want to be, I'd want to wear something comfortable, something light. I guess maybe like a Jedi costume. That's pretty straightforward. Well, what if you were an Most, alien, like in not in Tunisia, like in a studio environment where it's probably more comfortable? Oh, air conditioned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I would require air conditioning. Start writing this down for my contract <laughs> negotiations. <laughs> right. um, no green M and M's. Got it. <laughs> Gosh, you know, there's so many great characters, and I, I might go with a sand person. I'll have to say. Oh, yeah. very specific. <laughs> <laughs> well, in air conditioning, <laughs> in so air conditioning. somehow yeah. they could work that out. <laughs> you'd be like the diplomat from Tatooine, oh, and you'd be you one of the uh, one ah. of the oh, what the 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 Tuscan Raider ambassador, the one who represents them. Right. Yeah, Tuscan ambassador. The Tuscan ambassador. The <laughs> oh, thing I'm not a raider. Tu- I'm an ambassador. <laughs> That's right. The <laughs> thing about the kid. Tuscan ambassador is he still communicates, even diplomatically, the same way. <laughs> yeah, <that's the> <laughs> <way>. <laughs> yeah. He's holding like, like oh, his umbrella. He, he, yeah, he's saying he would like peace in these two quadrants. That- <laughs> <laughs> it always sounds really aggressive, yeah. but he's really saying. Right. They're a misunderstood group of folks. They are. Well, long. that's that also, well. Also, my brother and I are watching The Mandalorian together. We are about a right. third of the way through season two, mm-hmm. uh, and you don't know anything about what happens or anything in the future. Nothing. So that's so it's uh, hmm. it's Nothing a lot of fun. At all. I'm like your Wikipedia. Do you know Wikipedia is like Wikipedia, but for Star Wars stuff? Yeah. And I'm like your Wikipedia, like when we're watching it and, and you go, is that, who's that guy? And I go, oh, he's a so-and-so. He comes from this planet with this, you know, like I can tell you all sorts of irrelevant details to the story. So. Yeah, it's great. I love watching The Mandalorian with you because, I'm, you know, I frequently pause it and ask you all these questions. I yeah. think we've even created a system where we say how much detail and background information do <laughs> I want to know about really? some. Right. character or give me a level two report on amy sedaris <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you're like, it's not important <laughs> yeah <laughs> but there's still a lot of unanswered questions about the mandalorian right doesn't it conflict a bit with uh star wars canon i don't think so at least not yet oh well, okay yeah all right from a certain point of view mm-hmm. uh oh I, I hey, mean, yes. motion still it hey, is can I... canon so it's not i don't know it's, it's confusing yeah. what is and what isn't you know, they're letting things go until they start to contradict each other, and then they're going to have to do some. It's super laser siege cannon. <laughs> Not even just regular cannon. Exactly. It's super cannon. Hey, uh, I was in preparation for this minute and being a guest last night. I was, Alex, you had texted me the link. And no joke, at that same moment, I was flipping through the channels and I just came across the 70s movie. I turned it on, and who, and I didn't know this was coming. Alec Guinness was in it. Oh, what was the movie? It was called like the Quilliam Memorandum. Hmm. It's from early seventies. I think it's Quillam or Quilliam Memorandum, and he played. I just watched ten minutes of it. He played a, a a handler of a spy, a British spy in Germany. Huh. And it was great. They were walking around the stadium. And he was talking to the spy, and it is so wild seeing actors from these iconic movies in other movies delivering their dialogue because right. you ex- always expect the next next lines to be those di- the dialogue that's burned <laughs> into your brain right <laughs> he's talking about neo-nazis in in uh berlin and how the spy yeah. has to infiltrate this neo-nazi ring and i keep expecting him to say <laughs> oh, it's like oh i'm too old for this sort of thing <laughs> but sir alec guinness did a great job oh good yeah, I remember when I watched uh, I watched Bridge on the River Kwai, mm. which was an uh, Alec Guinness movie. I came out, I think, early 60s? Mm, maybe. Uh, I get yeah. those years. Yeah, because there's like a trilogy yeah. of... of yeah. Uh, trilogy of bridge movies. But while I was watching <laughs> it, I was trilogy. imagining it being a young Obi-Wan in like a Clone Wars like prison <laughs> camp. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, wow. <laughs> Because you know nice. the timing would have been would have been right, so yeah. uh, it was it's uh, it's good. <laughs> uh, nineteen oh yeah, nineteen fifty seven. Fifty seven, so very early sixties. Yeah, wow. I know that is the because there's that David Lean kind of uh, unofficial trilogy. Um, where so it's uh, between that and the uh, um, Doctor Zhivago and um, Lawrence of Arabia. Oh okay. Why are they a trilogy? Uh, I don't think they are. 
I know somehow I just I, I, I know that, that they're just three good movies that he made in a row. They're three in a row, right. And it's Okay, it, that's uh Bridge on the River Kwai came first and then Lawrence of Arabia sixty two and Doctor Zhivago sixty five. Nice run. Um, I don't think I've well, ever that, seen Doctor Zhivago. Mm. Nor have I. Mm. Never He's, seen that. Or, or Lawrence of Arabia, for that matter. I've never seen Lawrence of Arabia either. Oh, they're all really good. Mm. Uh, Someone but, told me if I'm going to see it, I should wait to see it on the big screen. Lawrence of Arabia. That's possible. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. So, I wouldn't say no to that. But they're really long, right. so yeah, you have to. You can't fast forward in the theater, Alex. I don't know if you know that. Mm. They haven't. A long time. Someone mm. told me that before I see Doctor Zhivago, I should wait until I'm really sick. <laughs> <laughs> Before I see Doctor Javago, if you can afford it, yeah, right. These right. days on that exchange thing, I yeah, can't. It depends figure on it your out. insurance. Yeah, in this economy. <laughs> um, well, so Bridge on the River Kwai works out perfectly because it's twenty years before Star Wars, and Revenge of the Sith is twenty years before Star Wars. Oh, there you go. So, yeah. so that would, he'd be the, he'd be the same age in <laughs> Bridge on the River Kwai that he was in Revenge of the Sith. So, yeah, nice. Well, well, that's all I have for minute one twenty six. Yeah, on that note, um, Andy, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming on the show. Did you have any last uh, any things you wanted to say uh, about this movie? Or, I mean, uh, now is your chance to kind of chime in on any of the um, previous eight movies that we've covered. So. Oh gosh, whoa! Well, <laughs> as, you know that <laughs> the name of the planet is Crate. Yes, Crate. Crate. Is there any significance to that? Uh, Not that I've ever this, heard. Like Crate no. or Crete, the island of Crete. Any, I'm assuming any mythical connection there. It's hmm. a binary. Uh, there's another planet in the system called Barrel. Then they just uh... <laughs> the sister planets, right? Yeah, sister solar systems, hmm. solar the, the, solar, solar sisters. sisters. And... There you go. The box store system yeah. where they have like the Bed Bath and Beyond planet and the <laughs> uh... anyway. You know, that's. I think it's too broad a question. I, I'll have to think about it for right. next time. So uh, have me back again, if you don't mind, and then I'll I'll come up with some really good Star Wars universe questions. All right. Well, I do want to. So, I want to point well, you out you love Solo Alex, and Rise of Skywalker, so you're definitely going right. to be welcome back for those yeah. movies. Oh, excellent! Thank. Well, I do want to thank you all for having me. It's been a lot of fun, and and just uh, kudos to you all for sticking out the 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 movies by minute saga. It's uh, awesome. It's a uh, you are both role models for those of us who are doing it for other movies. Hmm. Wow. Alex, I do want to point out that your drawing behind you, your background, yeah. keeps reminding me of a map of the United States. Hmm. Except it has two very large lakes in it. <laughs> I see the Baja Peninsula on the, on oh. the left and uh, Florida oh, on yeah. the right. You is know, that... Han Solo is, uh, I think that's Han uh, in the Northeast. Uh -huh. Oh, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Are, are we predicting, accidentally predicting the future of uh, climate change that there's going to be massive <laughs> <laughs> land lakes? Yeah. Right. Well, maybe after Yellowstone blows up, then then it'll uh, that that'll happen. Right. There you go. Get the, what, um, what is that? A sea, an inland sea. There you inland go. Inland mm -hmm. sea. Um, see. As well as these guys mentioned, they do a uh, show called Godfather Minute. It's available at GodfatherMinute.com, uh, and you can find all the other. Movies by Minutes podcast at moviesbyminutes.com. Um, there's a lot of them. There's like 200 Over, or so. What are we up to now? 300? 400? No, it's 200. Right around 200. 200. Wow. Um, and I heard a rumor that Alex is going to start Caddyshack 2 movie uh, by, by minute. Is mm. that right, Alex? Well, somebody's already done Caddyshack 1 already, right? Mm. Yeah. Probably, yeah. So I would feel I would feel weird jumping into the middle of someone else's franchise. So yeah, My, you know I can negotiate that for you because I think it, it's it's Tom Taylor and his friends, and they have no interest in progressing further. I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to do that. Don't worry. I don't don't bother them. Keep it open <laughs> I, in case they want. In case you they know, want it. The, in, the fees will be minimal. I'm I'm I'm. Pretty sure. All right. So. I'll start brushing up my Jackie Mason. <laughs> give us uh, a Jackie, Jackie Mason. Give us a Jackie Mason impression, Alex. I'm here to play golf with Kenny Shack too. That's <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh hey, they, they, I asked for a five iron. They gave me a putter. <laughs> That's what is it Ronnie Dangerfield in Caddyshack 2? Well, ironically, he's in Ca Jackie Mason is the Ronnie Dangerfield of Caddyshack 2. Oh. And it sounds like you're doing more of a Rodney uh it's a shame they never did Caddyshack 3 where they could have brought them all together. Mm. Or just who's the third member of that triad. Oh, yeah, you get progressively mm. weaker as you right. go down. Weak. The, the, uh, Gets weaker. It would have been like um, Chris Kattan would have been the Saturday Night Live alum. Okay. So this is like a 90s <laughs> thing. 
<laughs> yeah, because Caddyshack 2 was like 89 or mm. something. So yeah. uh, so who's the yeah. 90s uh, uh, Ronnie Dangerfield or uh, Jackie oh. Robbins? Jackie Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that note. Um, yes. We'll think about it. Uh, uh, and uh, thanks for joining us for the, for the first of our All-Star Minutes. And um, we will have another All-Star Minutes. Another All-Star back here tomorrow on Star Wars Minute. Star Wars, Wars Minute. Minute.